Hello everyone, welcome to Level Chain Channel. My name is Claudio Fonseca, I'm a real pilot, and today we are going to fly uh, from Austin to Dallas. This is a flight uh, using uh, VATSIM server uh, with the 737 uh, from uh, PMDG. So I'm going to show you first our route. So right now you can see Navigraph. So we depart in Austin to uh, Dallas Fort Worth. We are current at uh, parking position number 10 and uh, we have two options for departure today. Uh, Austin is operating on runways 18 so the closest one will be 18 left and uh, we also have 18 right, maybe 18 right because of our departure to the north west so let's see. Uh, if it's runway 18 left uh, we are going to taxi out of the main terminal via Golf 1 most probably and then Golf, Bravo or Alpha to the full length uh, runway 18 left. If is runway 18 right then uh, most probably we get out via Charlie 1 or Charlie 2 and then continue via Charlie to the holding point 18 uh, right. I'm expecting to depart today on the LOL 3 RNAV departure so a standard transition altitude for uh, 18,000 feet in the United States and runway 18 right or left it's it's climb on heading 175 or the heading assigned by the ATC for vectors to cross Walmart at or above 5,000 and the top altitude will be assigned by ATC then from Walmart on track 338 to LOL then on transition maintain initial assigned uh, altitude assigned by ATC and we expect to go out to 10 minutes after departure so basically straight ahead uh, or the heading assigned by the ATC and then we get the vectors to Walmart if we do not have uh, a departure ATC online we only turn in the shortest direction towards Walmart and we wait these 10 minutes to climb to our field altitude after LOL uh we go to clinger okay i think uh, yeah after lol we go to clinger this is our uh sorry it's not clinger it's force yeah so we go towards force on our departure uh then uh, after force uh on the lol3 departure we go towards goods and then over goods we already uh, start our arrival into uh, Dallas Fort Worth so goods is here uh, so we are going to fly this arrival is Bull 6 AirNav arrival with goods transition so after goods AGADS then uh, FBOD 290 knots we have to be at 290 knots between flight level 300 and 240 and then uh, kilo also 290 knots 230 and 200 then kiss and then booth at booth uh, we need to cross at 280 knots between flight level 190 and 17,000. then shrimp shrimp or shampoo or something like this uh, 280 knots between 17 and 15,000, and then cor uh, still 280 knots between 15 and 13,000. Come on at uh, 260 knots between 13 and 12,000, and then Delmo 210 knots, 12,000 feet. From Delro, we go to Elri and then Beyond, and then from Beyond, we get vectors uh, to the final, uh, most probably runway 18 right. So they have south operations now in uh, uh, Dallas okay uh, yep that's what we have so I'm expecting to land then on 18 right it can be something different but uh, maybe 18 right uh, that is I last most of the runways in Dallas Fort Worth so I'm going to brief this uh, ILS later on but landing on runway 18 sorry yeah we are expecting uh, to cross then 18 left and go to the main terminal so we have here uh, position starting from 105 to 150 on 
this side and the other side they start from position 5 and they go to 53 okay so if we have positions called 100 or something we stay on the western side if we have position uh, less than 100 we go to the east side okay so that's uh, basically what we have for our flight today so far uh why okay i don't want this and i want to show the entire route for now yes that's it so now we can go again to our simulator and i go inside our airplane and we start preparing our flight first thing i want to check is here on the fmc itself I'm going to use the right side in PMDG setup and aircraft and figures and I want to make sure there is no active failure so we are good to start oil quantity for the engines 94 and 96 they are okay and then the hydraulic is also 92 92 is also fine the last step here is the crew oxygen uh, it's also more than a thousand is a thousand six hundred so that is really good for our flight to start so we can take the irs to the nav mode through the align we can turn uh, on or arm our emergency exit lights and then uh, we can also check here and set the parking brake in preparation for the exterior inspection another thing that we are going to do uh before our flight but actually what i'm going to do i'm going to start uh, preparing the fmc with you so i can call my sim brief helper and i can fetch data from the sim brief so what we have today is flight american lines 105 uh, it's a 737 800 so we can check here it's a 737 800 26k is the engine and the navigation data is active up to 18 of may okay i can clear this message and we go to position is initialization our origin is kilo alpha uniform era austin and we are going to use the gps as the coordinate for our inertia so our route departing austin and the destination is kilo dallas fort war fort Worth. the flight number is american airlines 105 and on the next page we can set our route which is four with two s then direct to goods can activate and execute this change then performance initialization our cost index is 51 cost index 51 today reserves we go here on payload and we can take the reserves as 3 is 2.999 and the zero fuel weight we are expecting 60.7 our cruise altitude uh, here on the summary flight level 290 and the cruise wind on weather for top of climb wind is 242 at 13 242 slash 13 transition out to this 18,000 is correct so we can execute this and clear the insufficient fuel message uh, then we can think about uh, the rest later okay that's just we start our flight Oh, I'm going to need the sim brief helper again. So I just want to set the weights on the airplane. So now here is going to be FS actions. And for payload, I need to take this airplane to 60.669 as zero fuel weight. And I'm going to take a few of, uh, let's say, 5,614. So 5,700 total fuel on board okay that's what we have we can clear and we have a message here that is enable cruise altitude because we still have to put our arrival and our departure okay to do that i'm going to check the 80s first to make sure we have the right information so 
I'm going to give you my audio as well, so now most probably we can hear 80s. No, oh, it's one two four four. Sorry, eight is in Austin. It's one two four decimal four. I have to take it one two four four. Let's see if it's still active. Oh, the eight is is not active because Austin Tower is not online anymore. So we can come back to one two one uh, decimal five here on the radio number two okay one two two decimal eight unicom frequency on the VATSIM servers okay so now that we have uh, everything set I'm going to use and I'm going to show you my uh, vpilot so here on the vpilot we can take the weather for Austin. So right now we have wind 040 at 3, visibility is 10, state of mile or more, scattered at uh, 19,000, broken 20 s or 1900, broken 2700, overcast 4500. 24 degrees, 19 is the dew point, and 2, 9, or 8, 8 is the altimeter. So with this uh, runway uh, uh, wind 040 at 3, most probably runway 36, runway 36 for departure, we can still use uh, the same um, uh, departure, the same uh, standard instrument departure. So we can go on route uh, departure, sorry, in Austin, departing runway, in this case 36 left and we can fly the LOL3 departure with force transition we can execute make sure on the route page we have the route available for us and on the legs there is no discontinuity then on the arrival we can uh, expect for now runway 18 right that's what is in our plan from EKL transition and the arrival is POV6 with goods transition once again we can execute then we go to the root page, we make sure there's no discontinuity and also on the legs page everything seems to be there including the uh, speed that we are going to need for the descent one thing is that our descent speed is to 297, it's good enough so that's it, then um, we can calculate performance for this uh, flight Okay, so when we go to calculate performance, we can come to this page here. This is the virtual performance tool. So for now, we do not have uh, the tablet on the EMDG, so we have to use this. Austin. Runway. Is it correct? Runway should be... Let me just make sure we are on the right. Kilo Alpha Uniform Sierra. And the runways are 18 and 36. Uh, okay, Kilo Alpha Uniform Sierra. Okay, let's take 35 left, but it's supposed to be 36 left. Uh, let me just check which kind of um, taxiways we have around. Yeah, only Charlie is available. So yeah, that's full length. Uh, variable at 5, so we can use uh, wind as minus 5. Just to make sure we are going to have uh, the correct wind for departure. 24 and optimity is 2987. 2987 2 9 okay come on guys 29.87 
it says the minimum KNH is 900 hectopascal or 26 that's why I'm using 2987 okay it's not working so what I'm going to do is to load this weather in the form okay so I can take 25 minus 5 is okay that's fine and the weight for our takeoff today I'm expecting uh, just to make sure we're expecting a total takeoff weight of 66.1 okay 66.1 this 66.1 I'm going to make 66.3 and we can calculate this ah, so it comes with flaps 1 which is the optimum I do not like flaps 1 so we go to flaps 5 and we can calculate so flaps 5 35 left full length with 66.3 tons minimum flap retraction out with 1542 feet above main sea uh, level Uh, this is main sea level okay that's fine because the airport is at uh, 542 so that means uh, it's 1000 uh, above airport elevation uh, takeoff run available is 3733 meters we are going to take off with a reduced rate of 22,000 pounds 92.5 is the N1 with select temperature of 32 uh, V1142, VR142, V2147 and VRF30 is 142 in case of uh, engine failure we can continue straight ahead 25 miles ok so with this information I can go to my simulator and I can take it uh, the 25 degrees that is outside so far 32 oh and this is take off uh, to 22k that is correct now performance with flaps 5 and the CG I'm going to copy from this side is 19 so 19 is our CG speed is 142 142 and if I'm not wrong, 147, yes, 147. Uh, thrust reduction, acceleration, everything is 1000, which is fine for today. So we have our FMC uh, complete. At this time, the FO is coming back from the exterior, exterior inspection, and the captain is going to start preparing his side of the cockpit. So we take the traffic to on. We also would like to have the airports that we have around and altimeter is 2988. Then fly director on, auto throttle on, initial heading will be 355. 55 now and initial altitude there is no initial altitude it's going to be by ATC so for now 290 is what we have on our flight plan 355 is the initial heading we can set here on the course as well then we come here oxygen is set we have all the instruments correct including the warnings all set and here is speed brake press levers flap parking brake fuel control switches stabilizer trim cutout switches everything is normal okay one thing I'm going to do now is to set my displays to the mid position because it's too much at maximum so mid position is enough and I'm going to do the same thing on the left on the right side here so mid position is enough and we can start with the FO we need to check for the first flight of the day we check the entire system 
uh, fuel pumps, only one pump for the APU for now and window heat, we we'll take them to on our flight altitude is oops, 290 and we'll be landing in uh, uh, we'll be landing in Dallas Dallas altitude is 606 feet so we can take this to 600 600 is more than enough first flight of the day engine uh, start switches or better the igniters to the right side then we can also check that uh, we have traffic on and airport my director is on we can check now oxygen after oxygen flight instruments they are all correct we have a low brake pressure which is okay right now because we still have our uh, shocks in place so not a big deal auto brake to RTO check the engine parameters they are all fine and then our departure I'm going to look on the Navigraph if we have any VOR around here for the departure I don't think that there is a VOR around here in Austin just to make sure fixes I don't want okay we do not have anything at this time so we can continue our preparation from this point okay everything is set for now so as we do not have any uh, ATC we can assume that this information will be valid for our takeoff so we can set our V2 of 147 and arm LNAV and VNAV for departure so everything is set I'm going to make sure that we have all doors closed yes the doors they are all closed and then uh, we can ask ESX to prepare for pushback and departure this will also include to remove the wheel shocks and next step oh sorry I didn't do with you the pre-flight checklist so I can do the pre-flight checklist right now so oxygen is tested 100% on both sides navigation transfer to way switches uh, are these switches here they are normal and auto window heat is on pressurization mode selector is auto flight instrument heading 014 altimeter 2988 parking brake is set engine start levers cut off pre-flight checklist complete now that we are ready to start the can turn on the fuel pumps test and belt switch electric hydraulic pumps anti-collision light and transponder to transponder at this time everything is set for our flight let's see yep looks like they are ready to go as well Austin traffic this is uh, American 105 starting push back and engine start from position number 10 so now we want to nose to the left they go to the right
cannot hear GSX. What about you guys? Let me check. Okay, so I think now you are going to start listening to the airplane. I'm sorry about that. And we have here Mateus Diniz. Good flight, Captain. Thank you so much. I'm finally following the flight live. Thank you so much. What's the difference between climb modes on departure? Climb, climb 1 and climb 2. Paulo Tarossi says, good flight, Fonseca. Jorge Mateus da Silva Andrade. This is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 or Prepare 3D. This is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And Mateus, the difference here, Mateus is asking here, when we go to the um, CDU, when we go to N1 limit, on the ground, we have here uh, this uh, information uh, where we can set uh, the takeoff rate for this engine, 26,000 pounds of thrust, 24,000 pounds of thrust, 22,000 pounds of thrust, or 27,000 pow pounds of thrust, okay? Uh, this is for the takeoff, okay? So that's the thrust that we are going to have for takeoff. In this case, we selected 22,000 pounds of thrust with 32 degrees assumed temperature is giving us 92.5. If we go to takeoff, that's the reference that we have here on this page, and that's the reference that we are going to have here for takeoff as well, okay? But the question, uh, once again, from uh, Mateus Diniz is about this climb climb one and climb two this is the your climb thrust so climb thrust is the maximum climb thrust that the airplane can give you okay uh, climb one is uh, this uh, thrust minus 10 percent on the 737 uh, it maintains this 10 percent the rate okay uh, and once you reach 10,000 feet this 10% it starts to reduce to reach uh, the same thrust as climb thrust at around 30,000 feet, okay, flight level 300. Uh, for the climb 2 is another the rate on the climb thrust, so it takes climb thrust minus 20%. This minus 20% is going to be um, all the way to 10,000 feet and then starts to reduce the difference to reach the same uh, climb uh, thrust as climb as the full climb as well at flight level 300 okay which means that around 20,000 feet you have on climb to something like 10% the rate from the climb and on the climb one around 20,000 feet you have like 5% the rate on the climb but this is uh, total thrust okay this is always total thrust is not uh, an amount of percentage of N1 okay and I'm going to show you right now, if we go to climb page, it's going to show me what is going to be uh, my initial uh, any one climb will be 92.3, as you can see here, 92.3. If we go to any one limit and we set climb one, now we go to the same climb page and you will see that we have 89.3, which means a 10% reduction on your total amount of thrust once again this is not on reduction on your n1 okay is the reduction of amount of thrust and one more time if we select climb 2 if we go on the climb page now we have 86.3 is another 10% uh, reduction uh, total of 20% on top of the climb thrust one more time not percentage of n1 percentage of total thrust okay uh, usually uh, it is more than enough for you to allow the airplane to select it automatically okay so uh, once you select 
uh, the thrust that you want for takeoff and the temperature it's going to select the, n the next uh, climb that is giving you some reduction okay in this case our takeoff is 92.5 the climb thrust if we select climb is going to be 92.3 okay so the airplane is going to reduce from 92.5 to 92.3 if we had a higher D rate here and let's say that this uh, takeoff thrust was going to be something like 91.0 then most probably the airplane will automatically select climb one because our um, main goal during the takeoff is to have a reduction on the thrust from the takeoff to the climb thrust okay so let me show you one thing if we were going to take like 55 degrees you will see that the airplane automatically select climb to now because now with 55 um, degrees celsius of assumed temperature i will reduce uh, anyone for departure for the takeoff is 85.6 so he's the airplane is already reducing to climb 2 and even though reducing to climb 2 was going to give you a higher climb thrust than the takeoff okay but just for you to understand today we have let me just make sure we have the correct one yeah 32 degrees so if we take 32 degrees as select temperature okay it selects automatically climb one because climb one uh, is uh, more than enough for our uh, takeoff today uh, which means is going to give us some thrust reduction between takeoff thrust and the climb thrust now speeds because i changed that 142 142 and 147 just to make sure we have the right one 6.1 on the trim we can come here and take uh, i need this 6.1 I'm going to select here 6.1 as well. Make sure the Rudden and Nigeron trim they are free. And we keep them in zero and this one 6.1. So we are ready to go. I can release the parking brake. And we start our flight. Jorge Matheus da Silva is also, is also asking the difference of climb 1 and climb 2. I thought you understand as well, Jorge Matheus. If you have any doubt, if you did understand, please let me know. It's basically 10% and 20% reduction on the total amount of your climb trust. Rubens Paiva say excellent. Thank you so much, Rubens, for being here. Um, I know that you want more content in Portuguese, as I told you, it will come anytime. You guys from Brazil uh, send me uh, any kind of message through WhatsApp or even here through the YouTube uh, telling me what kind or which uh, subject you want me to talk about it, okay? Uh, so let's start our NG now. So pack switches, they go to off and we can start engine number two. Just want to make sure we have a nice view for our passengers today. I think this one is good enough. So 24, 25% and one, we can release the fuel. So now we are going to have a uh, fuel flow and the EGT is going to rise in maximum 10 seconds. told us to set parking brake we look to the side we make sure the airplane is stationary and then we can set the parking brake so we press the brakes fully pressed and then we can turn on the parking brake so now we can start the left engine and usually we wait until both engines are started 
to give them the confirmation but as GSX take a long time I'm going to confirm a good engine start right now even though we are still starting the engine number one but once again 25% and two deal we have fuel flow and EGT we're pretty much ready to start our flight that's what I told you, it takes a long time for them to disconnect the pushback so that's why I give them that uh, confirmation that the engines start were complete starter cut out then the captain asks first officer for the departure flaps, take off flaps 5 flaps 5 is selected so the FO can start collecting the generators to on, engine generators to on turn on the packs again, isolation valve to auto, APU bleed to off APU to off, engine start switch to continuous and now we can make a recall after confirming that all the engine parameters are ok we can turn off the lower DU and the captain can make the flight controls check we just wait for a confirmation everything is clear and we are ready to start Austin traffic American 105 start taxi via uh, main ramp then Charlie 2, Charlie to runway 36 left so taxi light on and we can start parking brake released Who base 5 I say I have a doubt in page what is QNH on and off QNH on and off um, where is this information Rubens for QNH on and off which page is this in the FMC give me a hint so I can try to find this information to explain to you oh I didn't do the before start and not even the before taxi checklist I'm sorry guys I'm doing everything by memory but we should be checking with the checklist I'm going to do it uh, when we are on the straight line on the taxi Charlie okay Rubens, please uh, let me know where is this QNH on or or off because the QNH uh, is something that you select, a number you select This is Charlie 1. On Charlie 1, we'll make left turn here on Charlie. I reduce my speed to 10 knots to make this 90 degrees turn. No more than 10 knots during these turns. Oh, 
Okay, as we move now in a straight line, we can do the before uh, start checklist. Light deck door is closed and locked. Fuel is 5,600 kilograms pumped zone. Passenger signs they are on. Windows locked. MCP V2147 heading 355 altitude point level 290. Takeoff speeds V1142, VR142, V2147. Video pre flight completed. Running at idle 3 and 3 and 0. Taxi and takeoff briefing is also completed. And anti collision light is on before. Uh, start checklist complete. And now the next step was the before taxi checklist, which we had the generators on, probe heat on, anti-ice auto, engine start switch continuous, recall is checked. Sorry, I forgot isolation valve is auto, recall checked, auto brake RTO, engine start levers idle detent. Flight controls checked and ground equipment are clear before taxi checklist complete. Now we have before takeoff checklist, which is stands for flaps 5 and green light. Stabilizer trim is 6.1 units before takeoff checklist complete. Uh, takeoff reference page ah ok so Jose Olavo Suarez I presume he wants to know the option Q and age on the V speeds takeoff speeds ok so this is Q or age ok uh, I'm going to show you right now so here you have the Q or age kick reference handbook on for the speed is going to show you the speeds here that is calculated by the FMC if you take them off you don't see these speeds anymore Q or age speeds on or off okay so this is uh, just for the FMC to show you the V speeds uh, what happened is uh, most of the companies they do not use the FMC they use applications like this to calculate the speeds so uh, there is no meaning for them this QRH speeds on the takeoff reference page okay if you do not have any program to calculate your performance okay I do recommend you to use a full trust for takeoff okay and then use the speeds from the QRH here it is enough for your uh, simulation okay but uh, I assume in a couple of months we are going to have the tablet so we all are going to have the performance calculator anyway good very nice so Austin traffic American 105 Lining up for takeoff runway 36 left. Okay, as I go here, I'm supposed to take all the lights on. the transponder also to on okay here we go make sure nobody on the final can even have a look on the runway and on our tickets Okay, nobody around, we can go. Thank you, thank you, Jose, you really helped me with this question. Because we are used to the QNH, which is the altimeter setting, and there it says QRH, is the quick reference 
handbook. Nice. Thank you guys. Austin traffic. Uh, American 105. Runway 36 left. Taking off. So here we go. And one and take off and one toga. speed autopilot command throttle armed and N1 we already have the climb thrust now flaps 1 as the speed goes towards flaps 1 when the speed is above flaps 1 going towards flaps up we can retract the flaps to up, so in this case flaps 1 and now flaps up. Beautiful. We should have the weather radar on, but of course it doesn't work in the Microsoft Flight Simulator. So now we have the flap up, no lights. We can check that the packs they are on. Engine bleeds, they are on. Take engine start switch to auto or off landing gear to up and off position auto brake to off and then we can do the after takeoff checklist after takeoff checklist engine bleeds they are on packs auto landing gear up and off flap up no lights after takeoff checklist complete This is vectors, as we do not have ATC, I'm going to fly direct to Walmart, the Walmart and execute, LNAV is engaged, the airplane starts turning left towards Walmart. That's it. Easy and nice departure from Austin. Gedielson uh, da Fonseca is asking if I miss flying general aviation aircraft. Gedielson, I do not miss, man. Um, it's, uh, you know, I, I think it's too dangerous. I'm joking. Of course, I did a lot of uh, flights on those planes, um, but it's not something that I would like to do it nowadays. Um, I really like my job. I really like flying jet airplanes, commercial airplanes like the 777 that I fly right now. I think it's amazing to take off and land the 777. It's really, really nice. So I do not feel like flying. Uh, Aeroboero again, or even a Paulistinha, or a Cessna, or something like that. No, that that's that's not for me anymore. Uh, so we just crossed 10,000 feet. Uh, we may have some turbulence. So for now, I'm going to select maximum rate of climb instead of the economic speed is to 62. Let's take the airplane to climb. We can retract, or sorry. Uh, 
our landing lights we don't need anymore runway turn off and taxi lights we don't need all of them so I just reduce our climb speed to try to get away from these clouds Now as we are above the clouds we can resume our economic speed of 308 knots, Mach 771 and we can release the passengers so seat belts to auto. So uh, the Yeltsin is not something that I'm missing, of course I will do it uh, especially uh, if I have another pilot that is current on those airplanes and I really trust him uh, of course it will always be nice to take my family with me for a short trip uh, uh, where I used to live in Brazil so yeah those will be nice flights but it's not something that I miss okay uh, Mateus Diniz, we don't have to set chrono after uh, set takeoff go around. Mateus Diniz, this is something that some companies they still do it. Uh, the important thing is that, let me show you guys. Uh, the, imp the important thing is that uh, you have maximum of five minutes to stay in the takeoff uh, thrust unless you have an engine failure and that will bring this uh, limit to 10 minutes so what do you need now is to have uh, an elapsed time from your takeoff in a region with no um, high terrain around like here in texas and close to sea level you are never going to reach those uh, five or ten minutes so it's not a big deal uh, some companies they do want you to have uh, like the elapsed time uh, running uh, to keep a track on the flight time on the progress itself yes you can do it but it's not a big deal because usually on those planes it's not working on the PMDG but you can go to menu and then on data link or FDDAO you will have uh, the information uh, with the times that you start uh, your flight that you start your engines and the time that you took off so you can always get the times uh, from from here okay uh, another thing that on the newer airplanes like on the max that you have uh, the uh, screen here on the left uh, and even on some triple sevens actually in most of the triple sevens that i fly nowadays we do not have this uh, clock anymore so uh, the chronometer for the elapsed time is automatic here uh, on the right side on the bottom okay is going to give you uh, the information on this side so I'm going to reset this uh, elapse time hold and reset um, another thing that okay we crossed 18,000 feet so we can set our altimeter speed standard um, another thing that I can tell you is that it's a good idea if you do it especially on the still on the 737 but it's not mandatory okay this is not something related to the Boeing procedure it's something for the companies to keep track on the flight okay usually I even some companies they ask uh, the the pilot uh, monitoring to start uh, the elapsed time when the engine start and the other pilot to start it during the takeoff row and then one will keep track of the flight time and the other one will keep track of the what we call block time okay most of the newer airplanes especially the ones equipped with uh, the acres uh, communication and this kind of system that can record the times for uh, pushback uh, takeoff landing and uh, and uh, engine shut down you don't really have to do it what I do miss was the weather radar but still doesn't work on the flight simulator cloud about these new cutoffs on off engines in real life 
they are only on NG or Max or it exists on some uh, 738 other versions. Uh, I've never seen these new ones, this new on the old planes like on the 737-300. For sure if the owner of the airplane wants to retrofit to these ones uh, the Boeing will give them the option but I've only seen see them uh, so far on the NGs and on the MAX airplanes. On the MAX airplanes they are the standard one so when they start developing the MAX then they realize that they can put this with no extra cost on the NGs and that will be a nice uh, trial and some tests for this kind of switch as well so uh, it was approved for the NG and now it's standard on the MAX. Uh, what else we do have here, Mateus Diniz, thank you again, don't worry man, it's it's also nice, okay, uh, don't get me wrong, if you have uh, the, uh, how can I say, if you are used to do it, do it, it's nice for you to keep track of your flight, and uh, now thinking about my live stream here, is something that would be nice for me to do, so I would be able to tell you uh, for how long we are uh, airborne and all those stuff, so I will try to do this uh, on my next flight, I will try to incorporate to my normal procedures as well. Mateus Boon, hello from Florianópolis. Hey Mateus, I was living in Balneário Camboriú just before I, I moved to the Middle East. Very good live stream to learn something. Good flight, Captain. Thank you so much. Uh, Rubens Pipe again, Fonseca, I saw that you have been using an add on to fetch the aircraft checklist. What's the name of this add on? Uh, well, there are two things here that I can tell you about this. Uh, first is that I use parallels. So as you can see, I do not have uh, the menu tab here on top. Okay, I do not have the menu tab here because I'm using flow from uh, parallels. Okay, so this is the application. Okay, you can uh, let me go here to. Uh, Flow. This is the name of the application, okay? So you can search for Flow. Fox Lima Oscar Whiskey, okay? Um, you can uh, search for this, okay? This is the first step, okay? This is the kind of um, application that it will remove your standard Microsoft Flight Simulator menu bar and will create this round shape menu bar. So this is like the menu that used to be on the top, but I have this here with this uh, new application. Uh, and on this new menu bar, what I'm doing is that I'm opening the Microsoft Flight Simulator checklist. As you can see, it says here MSFS checklist. Okay, so I'm not using any other checklist. This is the checklist that comes with the PMDG, the 737 PMDG, for any version in the Microsoft Flight Simulator. Okay, so the PMDG gives you the option not only for the checklist itself, but all the procedures from the electrical power up for external power, the electrical power up for APU power, preliminary pre-flight procedure, then pre-flight procedure on the overhead, pre-flight procedure at the in the middle of the airplane and then the pedestal, and then now I have uh, ATC calling me, uh, so I should be calling uh, four towards 135175. Okay, let's do it, 135. One seven five Fort Worth Center, hello, American one zero five. Squawk two three three one, American one zero five. and something that I'm going to do now on my settings audio okay so 
one more time all those checklists they are provided by PMDG uh, I'm uh, not doing the checklist for the procedures because actually they are procedures I'm just doing the checklist like the pre-flight, the before start, then before taxi, before takeoff, after takeoff and of course I'm going to do descent, approach, landing then shutdown checklist and secure checklist and it also includes here the after landing procedure, the shutdown procedure the secure procedure and the power down procedure everything is here from PMDG itself have tower later on Tau we send by above six arrival altimeter two niner niner one American one zero five Either one. We are going to descend via the arrival. Just want to make sure why this is not working. Okay, reset MCP altitude, the, the first altitude on the descent page is flight level 240 so flight level 240 for now and I didn't plan my arrival so for now I'm going to set uh, break 3 as precautionary 2991 is preset I'm going to take only the minimums from the ILS uh, the minimums for this ILS is 807 Best bear wing 3161 Fort Worth Center going to take 807 807 is set uh, Let me see, I think we do have 80s for Dallas Fort Worth, 123775. 123775. Uh, spear wings uh, 489, you can delete the speed restriction and uh, you can descend via the Suzy 6 arrival. Austin now, altimeter. Simultaneous approach in you. Uh, 6591 runway. 1 meter. 1 1000. 1 7. 1 3 year. Notice of through air mission. Have that to you. Operate transponder with altitude reporting load enabled on all airport surfaces. Advise on initial contact. You have information tool yet. 64.3, landing with flaps 30. Dallas Fort Worth International Airport arrival departure information tool yet 1853 Zulu. Wet 180 at 6. Visibility 3. Light rain. Mist. Few clouds at 2000. 5,000 scattered, ceiling 10,000 overcast, temperature 2-1, 2.21, altimeter 2 9 or 9 or 1, simultaneous approach in you, okay. expect ILF to runway, 1 meter. So I just copy the 80, so we have information Juliet 180 at 63, data miles in light rain and mist, uh, field 2000, uh, 21 degrees and uh, altimeter 9er 9er 2 9 er 9 er 1 United 1022 descend and maintain flight level 2 9 er 0 So next flight level is 200 United 1022 Okay, so we have now auto brake, I'm going to take it too with this condition uh, flap 30 147 is set. Now the frequency for the LS 111.9 and 176. So 111 decimal 9. On the other side as well, 111 decimal 9. 
176. Southwest uh, 1547, descend via the Jeffrey 5 arrival, uh, level altimeter 2992. Force 176. via the Jeffrey 5 arrival, uh, Southwest 1547. And 176. Southwest uh, 152, Houston Center is offline. Uh, radar service determined, change to advisory approved. So we are pretty much ready to continue. Uh, the next one. This flight to level one, uh, 17,000 by Oof. Oops, it's not descending. Four, sir. Hello, Delta 19. 17,000 by Oof. Let me go back to our speed of 292. What's the speed that we can maintain now? 280. Okay, my mistake about that. Can we calculate performance later on? What we can do now this send checklist. So pressurization landing altitude is 600 feet. Recall checked. Auto brake 2. Landing data VRF 3147. Minimums bar 807. And approach briefing is complete. Uh, Spark Cargo 501, it's been maintaining the 17,000 now. Coming back to the offline. profile. Later service determined, change to advisory approved. Slowly. <laughs> 290 knots, 280 is just over the buoy. So now I'm back to the profile, I can set VNAV. 17,000 feet and Q&A and altimeter 2994 So FMC speed we have path and we can do approach checklist and then I'm going to talk to you guys no, Approach checklist, on, uh, altimeter is this one Sorry, 2991 set We are ready to continue our descent Sorry guys, I missed track of uh, United Bet 1022, same Mach number. So, Mateus uh, Bon, I'm aircraft maintenance technician. It's a pleasure to see a Santa Catarina pilot around the world. Yeah. Yeah, I was born in, in uh, Rio Grande do Sul, in Passo Fundo, but then I moved to Curitiba. I did my uh, college degree there. And then I moved to Blumenau when I was flight instructor there and then later on when I was flying for Go I was living in Balneário Camboriú. Uh, yeah, this is a short flight, Matheus, yeah. I lost a little bit of track. Not a big deal. Southwest 1085, say mic number. So now next altitude is 15,000. Southwest 1085, forward center, same block number. One one eight seven is tower. American one zero five, regional approach one two five point zero two. Good day. One two five zero two, American one zero five. Bye bye. One two five. One two five zero two five. Uh, United uh, ten twenty two reduce speed to Mach point seven two. American 423, report uh, Zing inbound. All right, report Zing inbound, 423. Picture approach, hello, this is uh, American 105, uh, 158, descending via the Bovis 6 arrival. American 105, regional, uh, regional approach. Regional altimeter 2991, expect the ILS runway 18 right. 2991 and expect 18 right, American 105, thank you. So that is confirmed. We have a movie 6, ILS 18 right, 
so I'm going to calculate the performance for it uh, right now with you guys if I do have time so Kilo Dallas Fort Worth runway 18 right mission is good I'm going to use this information left 30 and 64 300 So now we can use auto brake 2 to vacate uh, on Bravo or something close, it's good enough. 147, 152 makes sense. So auto brake 2, as we were expecting, is good enough. So now the airplane is going to reduce to 260 to cross 260 over Mon. Is maintaining 280 by now, but then Mon is 260. As you can see, there is a deceleration point. The airplane just crossed it now. It was a little bit optimistic to reduce 20 knots in 3 miles, but yeah, we can have it. Just to make sure we have the correct missed approach here on the legs page, it says uh, after 1100 on the current track we fly heading 250 and then we intercept 2222 likes and we hold that likes 3000 feet. So now going to reduce to cross Delmo at 210 12,000 feet we are getting closer we can even turn the seat belts to on lights and give the aid to the cabin crew cabin crew prepare for landing so they are going to secure the cabin for us if you are a passenger on this flight you are not seeing much okay, we need 2,210 knots over Delmo so to maintain 210 American 105 to maintain 4,000 to maintain 4,000 American 105 4,000 is the clearance by ATC now, so altitude 4,000 I'm going to use level change and the speed I'm going to use flap up speed which is 212 knots I'm not going to reduce to 210 Regional departure good uh, even afternoon American 2677 through 2795 by the American 2677 have a regional departure radar contact one, one more time, we are waiting Nellen. tower to be uh, now east tower 12655 12655, I'm going to leave it on standby 126550 Here we are This is to right, I'm going to reduce a little bit, this is better so we are still descending on the arrival now to 4,000 feet by ATC. Let me see if we can see something on the other side. Yeah, no, the passengers on the right side, they cannot see much. going to use the vertical situation display and terrain on the right side there is no much terrain around here American 2677 have a contact port center 135.172 guys can you hear the ATC? just let me know uh, 4000, ECO is 4000 ok and then uh, 3000 Johan and also Legri 
Nietzsche is the final approach fix five miles to the runway at 2400 good enough Regional, what's uh, the American Alliance 105 number in sequence? That's two aircraft calling at the same time, American 105, say again. What's our number for runway 18 right? American 105, you're number one for the runway. Okay, we'll get it down, thank you so much. So we are number one. We are going to extend the speed brake. American 105, no rush, you got no one before or after you for the runway right now. Okay, thank you so much. We expect uh, shortcuts anyway. Thank you. No flaps one. What aircraft calling approach on answer say again? And even flaps five, 210 knots. In the original, it's Frontier Flight 2707 at DFW. Uh, currently, we're unable to follow a flight plan through the uh, website. Are we able to follow a plan with you? Cross here, fly 2707. Yeah, the uh, authentication system is down right now. So go ahead and contact tower 126.55. Two six five five. Bye bye. So now we have flaps five extended to 110 knots. Speed brake extended. This is a good rate of descent. India, Victor, Yankee, November is already identified, so the ILS is correct. Going to reduce speed to 180 knots. Regional approach, good afternoon, November 721 Sierra Zulu is type citation longitude, parked at Dallas Love, ramp 44 with information Foxtrot, ready to copy IFR to Sedona. I'm going to remove or just go Number 721 Sierra Zulu, starts offline coordinating, say again, you want your uh, IFR there? Yeah, yeah, just looking to pick up IFR clearance to Sedona, please. 4721 Zero Zulu, we've got a memo here at San Francisco, down as buyers, ready to copy. Alright, November 721 Zero Zulu, ready to copy. Number 721 Zero Zulu, you are clear to the Sedona Airport uh, via the Kitty 5 departure, that's Kilo Kilo India Tango Yankee 5, uh, Verma transition, then as filed. Just waiting ATC to finish this clearance so we can tell him we are ready for this approach. All right, November 72100 is clear to Sedona Airport via the Kitty 5 SID. Roma transition will climb via the SID. Uh, departure will be with you, squawking 0565. Four seven two one zero Zulu, re-back, back, push and search your discretion advice for the taxi, the back to left for departure. All right, we'll uh, call you when ready for taxi and uh, expecting runway 13 left for departure. What's your Zulu? American 105, you're ready for the base turn anytime. Okay, Two aircraft falling at the same time, American 105, uh, you said you're ready for the base? AFARM, American 105. American 105, fly heading 090, I'll have a uh, vector to the final for you shortly. Heading right 090, American 105. So heading 090, and heading south. Other aircraft falling, say again, call sign. 
Alpha Fear Wing 3161 with you 18,000. Now we can take uh, an intercept. Reasonable approach. DSW altimeter 29901. From. Uh, to maintain 12,000. Flight 270. 177 and execute. Fear Wing 3161. So we just take okay, an extension from Johan. DSW altimeter 29901. We are reaching 4,000 feet. C991 will inspect ILS 17 center, zero, 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 speed out to the quieting, we are reaching 4,000 feet. American 105, clear direct Johan, cross Johan at or above 3,000, cleared ILS runway 18 right approach. Direct to Johan, cross Johan uh, at or above 3,000, clear ILS 18 right approach. American 105. Johan. Here we go, 3,000 or above. November 9, 7, 8, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 500 feet per minute. We have the ILS identified, correct uh, sensing, uh, approach again, mode is armed, warlock and glide slope is armed. Uh, we are at Addison Airport and they're requesting VFR to the south. Number 978 Lima, visual approach, uh, Roger, departures with me, squawk 5234. Departure with you is squawk 5234 for 978. 400 feet per minute now. Number 978 Lima, say requested cruise altitude and would you like flight following to a destination? Eliza Capture, Seagull Channel. Uh, negative. 76, final approach course. Traffic. Traffic. We have a traffic off scale. Okay, not close to us, which is fine. American 105, uh, contact tower 126.55, we'll see you. 126.55, American 105, thank you, have a good day, bye bye. One ALS, clear for takeoff, number version 72. Fort Worth Tower, hello, American 105, ILS 18, right? Altitude acquiring. Twenty-five hundred. Fort Worth Tower. Hello, American uh, one zero five ILS one eight right. American one zero five. These are retired winds one eight zero six. Uh, Summit of two nine nine or one runway one eight right. Clear to land. One eight right. Clear to land. American one zero five. We are clear to land. We have the glide slope alive, so at this time, gear down. We are the speed brake, flap 15. Reduce speed to flap 15 speed. Engine start switch go to continuous. And here we are. Glide scope capture, missed approach, it is 3000. According to Boeing procedures, when we intercept the glide slope, we set the landing flaps, in this case, flaps 30. We can reduce the speed to VRF plus 5. We have flaps 30 and green light, so we can do now the landing checklist. Landing checklist, engine start switches, they are in continuous. Speed brake, it is armed, and we have the green light. Landing gear, it's down, and the rings, and flaps, it's 30, green light, landing checklist complete. 
get you sorted out. Man, this approach in Dallas is really, really nice. Even in real life, it's amazing. Let me try to get this straight too much. Yep. So here we go, guys. 1,500. We were supposed to see the runway at uh, 3 stated miles, so this is just short of 3 miles. Right now we are 4 miles, 3.9 miles, so we should be able to see the runway soon. I would say around 2.5 miles. You can follow the distance to the runway right here. Yeah, now we see the approach lights. We have 1000 stable. We see the approach lights at 2.8, pretty much what uh, the weather information was giving us. Some rain. Wipers too low. Here we go. First thing I'm going to do, oops, I'm going to take out the auto throttle. I'm going to take out the autopilot. Just maintain. Approaching minimum. Towards the runway. Sink rate. Minimum. Why we are descending that much? I don't know. My mistake. Correcting. One hundred. Maintaining the approach speed. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Full reverse is wet. High speed, we are approaching 60 knots. Manual brakes, auto brake disarm, turning left here on Echo 6. American 105, cross runway 18 left at Whiskey Mike, where's the parking? Cross 18 left, then Whiskey Mike, we go to 110. What terminal? Uh, just give me a moment. Uh, 110 on the Terminal Bravo, uh, American 105. American 105, back to the gate via Golf, good night. Via Golf, thank you, 105, bye bye. So here we are cleared to cross the runway 18 left. So let's start with the after landing procedure, we still have to cross the runway. I'm going to keep the lights on. How to break R2, weather radar we don't need anymore. We go left here. Then we taxi via Golf. Terminal Bravo. I have no idea why my taxiways are like this. Even the signs, they are a little bit weird. Anyway, the runway is clear. 
we can taxi then via go which is the inner okay, one is here, flight 2707 just wanted to make sure you got the pdc inside the terminal so this is going to be the second we have the first PDC one is foxtrot second one is gold six one as we are getting and out of the runway now i can Roger, thank you. take my lights off wipers to low so this is foxtrot to the left i take the second one which is golf track the speed brake Flaps go up, transponder goes to transponder, we are ready to take the next one left. So when I disengage my autopilot, I don't know why my joystick was pulling the airplane down, those calls for sync rate were going to be for sure a call for a go around but I'm not going to miss uh, the flight because the joystick issue here so not a big deal today as we clear have the runway side and the speed was too good so this is taxiway go go on this one all the way to position 110 Bravo. Okay, this is not one one zero. Let me just make sure which one is the gate that we go. We can go to Bravo 26. Okay. Bravo 26. Bravo. And Bravo 26. Here we go, what are you guys saying? Uh, bad weather, nice landing. Boas say Marcus Andrade, another channel member. Thank you so much, Marcus. Uh, GX, GX, also around here. Thank you guys. Uh, I'm starting to slow down a little bit now because it's uh, already uh, very, very late here in Doha. So my wife is sleeping right now the kids they are sleeping so I'm just going to finish uh, this short flight with you I'm already going to start to ask you uh, to subscribe to this channel if you are not subscribed yet if you like this video share with your friends if you have any doubt or comments you have always the comments below uh, any video or any live stream uh, I can you can reach me and for sure I answer to you in two or three days maximum it depends on my roster so thank you once again guys for being here today it was a nice flight with uh, this weather in arrival here in uh, this weather on arrival here in Dallas was was really nice with some some rain it's always nice to fly a different weather and standard ILS approach though uh, so here we are on the ground, uh, I'm just waiting to start the APU as we get closer to the stand. So I'm going to ask GSX to show me the stand. Here we are, getting close to, to the stand itself. 
forward to power through and put on six months with your highlight plus seven center and work one base. Last aircraft on, say again. Yeah, screw it, 7161, we were with you on the ILS up in the center, but we're going to miss approach. Spirit Wings 3161, CFW Tower, wind 2006, fly runway heading, climb and maintain oh. 3000. Runway heading, and that was 3000. Let's right, start APU. Tree one six one turn left heading one six zero. Left one six zero. Tree wing thirty one sixty one. Oops, I stopped. My controls they are too abrupt here today. We need to make left turn here. Spear wing 3161, departure 125.02, we'll see you next time. Yeah, this is our spot. This is one to the right. I have no clue why my tax face, they are faded like this. Yeah, here we enter and we take right and then left to our final position. So NBW right here. 2707, spot 48 with Juliet taxi. Frontier flight 2707, runway and winning now left back. Left. To Kilo, Zulu, Golf, Wishy Golf. Into this position. I assume that this guy is the marshaller. And Frontier Flight 270718, left Kilo Bravo Golf, Whiskey Golf. Hmm. Okay, so he's a little bit in the diagonal here. Taking me to go right. Let's do what he says. You're telling me to go right. Now left. Now right. Stop. A little bit more. Okay. Give me a second. I'm moving. Yeah, here we go. Okay. This is the point. The parking brake is set. Now, we can shut down the engine so APU generators they are on the bus. We can shut down engines then therefore we'll turn off fuel pumps that we don't need set the passenger belts to off electric hydraulic pumps to off isolation valve to open if you bleed to on anti collision light to uh, off wipers to park by directors sir a uh, bravo 5 ready for a transponder stand by Okay, now we can do shutdown checklist. Two pumps. We have one pump on. Probe heat is auto. Hydraulic panel is set. Flaps up no lights. 
parking brake for now is set, engine start levers oh, cut off, weather TV radar TV. is oh, shut down, checklist is complete. We can request the boarding. boarding requested. So here we go guys. Here we are. And uh, we'll turn the aircraft calm on. Dallas. Uh, Once yep. again, thank you so much for being here. Two, three, and zero, six, I do see taxi. you guys uh, next time. Have a good week. Runway bye bye. One seven right, taxi via Gulf Yankee Kilo Echo Hotel.